Hi, I'm Tim. Welcome to Watchbox, and thanks for logging on. If you love this watch, email me, tmasso at thewatchbox.com. It's in the description below. It is your purchase and pricing email question line for buying this or any watch you see on any Watchbox platform. Please reach out to me directly. Email tmasso at thewatchbox.com for pricing. Today, we're discussing a mid-2000s classic from Audemars Piguet. This is the Audemars Piguet Jules Audemars Equation of Time, and it's far more than its name implies. The watch in white gold is 43 millimeters in diameter. It is 11.8 millimeters thick and from lug tip to lug tip, 49.5 millimeters with a 22 millimeter spacing between the lugs. This combination of features was first launched by Audemars Piguet in 2000, and you can see it's got quite a lot going on, but first the fit and the feel on my 16 centimeter circumference wrist. You can see it's broad and it's flat, however, it does stretch out to the edge of my wrist. So I'm going to recommend this being a 43 millimeter dress watch, you have a wrist of at least 16 centimeters circumference to wear it well. That said, it is very low slung and it will slide underneath the cuff. Taking a quick look at the strap, you can see it's high grade, medium rectangular scale alligator leather. It's unbolstered, which means Means it's quite thin. It has a folded edge, a curved spring bar, and then a monotone stitch. You can see the leather, top and bottom, is in outstanding condition. This is a new Audemars Piguet factory strap. It is drilled fairly close to the case, and in order to prevent any impingement of the strap and guarantee a full range of motion, there's a curved spring bar used here, which also better couples the strap to the case flank for a more integrated look. Now, the buckle, like the watch, is white gold. And you can see it is the AP logo style folding clasp. It snaps shut. Take a quick look at it, though. You can see it is a darker type of white gold. It is a non plated white gold clasp, uh, likely due to wear over time, since Audemars Piguet, as a rule, uses rhodium coatings on its white gold. It's true today. It was apparently true even in the mid-2000s. This is mid to late 2000s. You can see F66000 series. That's how you know. And the watch features a combination of artisanal elements that I love. First of all, you can see this is clearly welded lug construction, a very old school and laborious way of making a case. You make the case, you make the lugs. There are slots in the case. The lugs are inserted. The lugs are welded on. And then once welded on, Hand finishing is used to remove evidence of the welded joint for a nice sharp break between lug and case. You can see the case band has longitudinal satination. The lug profiles have vertical satination. The lug hoods are polished. And then the bezel, which is domed, is also polished. We have an Audemars Piguet logo on the crown. Pusher adjusters all the way around to adjust the calendar system. On the dial, you can see that there's a flange outboard that gives you a certain amount of important information. Now, one thing is not geographically proper and that is the equation of time. You'd see this little serpentine hand with the blazing sun at the end. It will track the difference between solar noon and mean noon or average noon. Solar noon or true noon is when the sun is directly overhead. But within a time zone, there are different localities and the sun will be directly overhead those spots at different times of the day, even if in all of those spots within a time zone, it is technically noon clock time. So the equation of time gives you the difference between clock time and true solar time. And that can vary by up to 15 minutes either direction, plus or minus, and clock time and true solar time will coincide four times a year. And those four times a year, the equation of time should be pointing to zero. Now, here's the part that's important to the model. Uh, the watch is always geographically proximate to show the time of sunrise and sunset. And you need a very, a very defined location. So New York City in this instance. And it is important to have latitude in order to know sunrise and sunset. So I'm in Philadelphia, so this will work just fine for where I am in Philly. If I were up in Connecticut, it would probably also work just fine, but venture too far away from New York itself, specifically New York's latitude, and you're going to find that there is a variance between the displayed sunrise and sunset and the actual sunrise and sunset. Now, the watch is also a perpetual calendar in a moon phase. So at the same time, you've got the equation of time, the local sunrise and sunset times. You've also got a perpetual calendar, and this will work anywhere. The watch has the day, the date, the month, the leap year phase, 
and then it has a moon phase that's good out to 122 years between corrections. You can see that the dial has an enormous amount of guilloche. We have applied white gold radially configured Roman numerals, including a watchmaker's four. They sit on a satin finished hour track. So there's a lot of detail and richness as well as spectacular depth to the style. And we have white gold leaf style hands for the hours and minutes. Turn it over. You can see this is the equation of time, Jules Audemars line. And the movement is actually the 2120 with a 2808 module. So this is the same JLC based automatic tractor movement that you'd traditionally find in the Royal Oak Jump before 2022. Uh, so you can see this is designated as the dash four or slash four version of the 2120. Originally designed in 1967 for Audemars Piguet, Patek Philippe, and Vacheron, it was only ever used by those three brands, never by JLC, never by any other brand. The movement is ultra thin. The base is only 2.4 millimeters thick. It was a work of art then. It remains a work of art today, though anachronistic in some fashion. You could see back then in the mid to late 2000s, AP was still using its exquisitely hand engraved and skeletonized AP logo style rotor and there's a lot of information on this rotor but what I love most is that the interior of the rotor is generously beveled which creates a number of sharp interior angles where bevels meet. AP stopped including rotors like this a long time ago except by special request as an upcharge so it's nice to see it here this watch deserves it. What you'll also note is that there's a mass on one side of this rotor but the rotor goes all the way around there's actually a beryllium ring that sits on four ruby rollers, and this was how JLC got the watch so thin. There's no danger of the rotor hitting the base plate or the bridges, because the ruby rollers support it 360 degrees around, even in conditions of shock. Now, one element that always set this movement apart from conventional AP calibers like the 3120 was that the beveling here was truly rounded, mirrored, and hand-finished. That takes more time and expense. You could see that there's solarization on the ratchet wheel. All screw heads have been black polished. You can see that the click has been black polished. We have solarization as well on the crown wheel core. Satination on the wheels. We have black polished screw heads with chamfered slots and circumference, engine turning on the base plate, and a free sprung gyromax style balance that is particularly shock tolerant and adjusted precisely in five positions as well as to temperatures. It beats way at an archaic 19,800 vibrations per hour because remember, this is an ultra thin watch from the late, well, the movement from the late 60s. The watch is more modern, but the movement vintage is late 60s, and a lower beat rate at the time was used to achieve a thin movement that also had a reasonable power reserve in this instant 40 hours, and the watch has a 30 meter water resistance. So if you like what you see on both sides, especially if you heart New York, reach out to tmasso at thewatchbox.com for purchase and pricing details.